Chapter 25 The Book of Jihad Chapter 1 The Obligation of Jihad Narrated It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said When the Prophet was expelled from Mecca Abu Bakr said to him They have driven out their Prophet Verily, to Allah we belong, and to Him we return. They are surely doomed. Then it was revealed, permission is to fight against disbelievers. It is given to those believers who are fought against, because they have been wronged, and surely Allah is able to give them believers victory. Then I knew that there would be fighting. <laughs> Ibn Abbas said, This is the first verse that was revealed concerning fighting. Great Sahih. Narrated, it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that Abdur Rahman bin Av and some of his companions came to the Prophet in Mecca and said, O Messenger of Allah, we were respected when we were idolaters and when we believed we were humiliated. <laughs> He said, I have been commanded to pardon, so do not fight. Then when Allah caused us to move to al Madina, he commanded us to fight, but they refrained. Then Allah, the mighty and sublime, revealed, Have you not seen those who were told to hold back their hands from fighting and perform a salah? Great Sahih. <laughs> narrated, it was narrated that Abu Huraira said, the Messenger of Allah said, I have been sent with concise speech, and I have been supported with fear. While I was sleeping, the keys to the treasures of the earth were brought to me and placed in my hands. Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah has gone, and you are acquiring them. Great Sahih. Narrated. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, a similar hadith, great Sahih. Narrated. It was narrated from Sa'ed bin al Musayyab and Salama bin Abdul Rahman that Abu Huraira said, <laughs> I heard the Messenger of Allah said, I have been sent with concise speech and I have been supported with fear. While I was sleeping, the keys to the treasures of the earth were brought to me and placed in my hands. Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah has gone and you are acquiring them. Great Sahih. <laughs> narrated Sayyid bin al Musayyab narrated that Abu Huraira told him that the Messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. Whoever says, La ilaha illallah, his life and his property are safe from me, except by its right, in cases where Islamic laws apply, and his reckoning will be with Allah. Great Sahih. Narrated. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, When the Messenger of Allah died and Abu Bakr was appointed as Khalifa, and some of the Arabs disbelieved. Umar said, O oh, Abu Bakr, how can you fight the people when the Messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Whoever says, La ilaha illallah, his life and his property are safe from me, except for its right and his reckoning will be with Allah. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, said, By Allah, I will surely, I will surely fight those who separate prayer and zakah, for zakah is what is due on wealth. By Allah, if they withhold from me a small she-goat that they used to give to the Messenger of Allah, I will fight them for withholding it. Umar said, By Allah, when I realized that Allah, the Mighty and Sublime, had opened the chest of Abu Bakr, to, fight, to fighting, then I knew that it was the truth. Great Sahih. 
it was narrated from Ubaydullah bin Abdullah bin Utbah bin Masud that Abu Huraira said, When the messenger of Allah died and Abu Bakr was appointed Khalifa after him, and some of the Arabs disbelieved, Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, O Abu Bakr, how can you fight the people when the messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Whoever says, La ilaha illallah, his life and his property are safe from me, except for its right, and his reckoning will be with Allah. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I will surely fight those who separate prayer with and zakah, for zakah is what is due on wealth. By Allah, if they withhold from me a small she-goat that they used to give to the Messenger of Allah, I will fight them for withholding it. Umar said, By Allah, when I realized that Allah, the mighty and sublime, had opened the chest of Abu Bakr to fighting, then I knew that it was the truth. The wording is that of Ahmad, great Sahih. <laughs> it was narrated that Abu Huraira said, when Abu Bakr mobilized to fight them, Umar said, O oh, Abu Bakr, how can you fight the people? When the messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight <coughs> the people until they say, La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Whoever says, La ilaha illallah, his life and his property are safe from me, except for its right, and his reckoning will be with Allah. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with me, him said, By Allah, I will surely fight those who separate prayer and zakah, for zakah is what is due on wealth. By Allah, if they withhold from me a small she-goat that they used to give to the messenger of Allah, I will fight them for withholding it. Umar said, By Allah, when I realized that Allah the Most High had opened the chest of Abu Bakr to fighting them, then I knew that it was the truth. Great Sahih. <laughs> it was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, When the Messenger of Allah died, some of the Arabs apost apostatized, apostatized. Umar said, O oh, Abu Bakr, how can you fight the Arabs? Abu Bakr said, The Messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight the people until they testify that La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and that I am the Messenger of Allah, and establish prayer and pay, pay zakah. By Allah, if they withhold from me a small she-goat that they used to give to the Messenger of Allah, I will fight them for withholding it. Umar said, By Allah, when I realized that Abu Bakr was con confident about this idea, then I knew that this was the truth. Abu Abdur Rahman al Nasai said, Imran al Qatan is not strong in hadith, and this narration is a mistake. The one that is before it is the correct narration of a suri from Ubaydullah bin Abdullah bin Utbah from Abu Huraira. Great Sahih. <coughs> Abu Huraira narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight the, the people until they say, La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Whoever says it, his life and his property are safe from me, except for its right, and his reckoning will be with Allah. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Anas that the Prophet said, Strive against the, the idolaters with your wealth, your hands and your tongues. 1. 1. Its chain has defects, while its meaning is supported by other, other chains. Great Daif. Chapter 2. Stern warning against forsaking jihad. It was narrated from Abu Huraira. 
that the prophet said whoever dies without having thought or thought of fighting he dies on one of the branches of hypocrisy great sahih chapter 3 concession allowing a person not to join a campaign Abu Huraira said I heard a messenger of Allah say by the one in whose hand is my soul were it not for the fact that there are some believing men who would not feel happy to stay behind when I go out on a campaign and I do not have the means to pro provide them with mounts so that they can join me. I would not have stayed behind from any campaign or battle in the cause of Allah by the one in whose hand is my soul. I wish that I could be killed in the cause of Allah then be then brought back to life then be killed then be brought back to life then be killed then be brought back to life then be killed great sahih <laughs> chapter 4 the superiority of the mujahideen over those who do not go out to fight it was narrated that sal bin saad said i saw marwan bin al hakam sitting and i came and sat with him he told us that Sayyid bin Fabi told him that the following was revealed to Allah's Messenger. Not equal are those of the believers who sit at home and those who strive hard and fight in the cause of Allah. Then Ibn Umm Maktum came when he was dictating it to me, Sayyid, and said, O Messenger of Allah, if I were able to go for jihad, I would go out for jihad. Then Allah, the mighty and sublime, revealed to him, while his thigh was against mine and became so heavy that I thought my thigh would break until the revelation stopped, except those who are disabled by injury or are blind or lame. 1. Abu Abdur Rahman an Nasai said, this Abdur Rahman bin Ishaq is tolerable, while Abdur Rahman bin Ishaq, from whom reports Ali bin Mushir, Abu Muawiyah, and Abdul Wahid bin Siad, from Al Numan bin Saad, he is not trustworthy. 1. Al Nisa 495. Great Sahih. <laughs> It was narrated that Ibn Shihab said, Saad bin Saad said, I saw Marwan sitting in the Majid, so I went and sat beside him. And he told us that Said bin Fawit had told him that the Messenger of Allah dictated to him the words, Not equal are those of the believers who sit at home. And those who strive hard, on the, and those who strive hard and fight in the cause of Allah. Then Ibn Umm Maktum came to him while he was dictating it to me, said and said, "O Messenger of Allah, if I were able to go for jihad, I would go." out for jihad but he was a blind man then Allah revealed to his messenger while well, his thigh was against against my thigh and it became so heavy that I thought my thigh would break then it was lifted from him And Allah the mighty and sublime revealed except those who are disabled by injury or are blind or lame one one Anisa 495 great Sahih it was narrated from al -Bara that the Prophet said bring me a shoulder blade of a camel or a tablet and write not equal or those of the believers who sit at home. One Ahmed bin Umm Maktim was behind him and he said, Is there a concession for me? 
Then the following was revealed, except those who are disabled by injury or are blind or lame. 2. 1. Anissa 495. 2. Anissa 495. Great Sahih. It was narrated that al Bada said, when the following was revealed, not equal are those of the believers who sit at home. 1. Ibn Umm Maktum, who was blind, came and said, O Messenger of Allah, what about me? I am blind. He said, he did not leave before the following was revealed, except those who are disabled by injury or are blind or lame. 2. 1. Anissa 495. 2. Anissa 495. Great Sahih. Chapter 5. Concession allowing the one who has two parents to stay behind. It was narrated that Abdullah bin Amr said, A man came to the Messenger of Allah and asked him for permission to go for jihad. He said, Are your parents alive? He said, Yes. He said, Then strive for their sake. Great Sahih. Chapter 6 Concession Allowing one who has a mother to stay behind. It was narrated from Muawiyah bin Jamia, uh, Jaim, Jaim, Jahima as Sulami that Jahima came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, I want to go out and fight in jihad, and I have come to ask your advice. He said, Do you have a mother? He said, Yes. He said, Then stay with her, for paradise is beneath her feet. Great Sahih. <laughs> Chapter 7 The virtue of the one who strives in the cause of Allah with himself and his wealth. It was narrated from Abu Sayyid al Qudri that a man ca came to the Messenger of Allah and said, O Messenger of Allah, which of the people is best? He said, One who strives with himself and his wealth in the cause of Allah. He said, Then who? O Messenger of Allah. He said, then a believer, isolating himself in one of the mountain passes, who fears Allah and spares the people his evil. Great Sahih. Chapter 8 The Virtue of the One Who Strives in the Cause of Allah on Its Feet. It was narrated that Abu Sayyid al Qudri said, In the year of Tabuk, the Messenger of Allah addressed the people while leaning against his mount. He said, Shall I not tell you of the best of the people and the worst of the people? Among the best of the people is a man who strives in the cause of Allah on the back of his horse or on the back of his camel or on his own two feet until death comes to him. And among the worst of the people is an immoral man, Fajir, who reads the Book of Allah, but he does not refrain from doing anything bad because of it. Great Hassan. It was narrated that Abu Hurairah said, No man who weeps for fear of Allah will be touched by the fire until the milk goes back into the others, uh, into the others and the dust of jihad in the cause of Allah and the smoke of hell will never be combined in the nostrils of a Muslim. Great Sahih. <laughs> it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, No man will enter the fire who weeps for fear of Allah Most High until the milk goes back into the others and the dust of jihad in the cause of Allah and the smoke of hell will never be combined. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, Two will never be gathered together in the fire. A Muslim who killed a disbeliever then tried his best and did not deviate, and two will never be gathered together in the lungs of a believer. Dust in the cause of Allah and the odor of hell, and two will never be gathered in the heart of a solve fate and envy great hassan 
it was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah said, The dust in the cause of Allah and the smoke of hell will never be combined in the lungs of a slave, and the sting stinginess and fate can never be combined in a slave's heart. Great Hassan. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, The dust in the cause of Allah and the smoke of hell will never be combined in a man's face, and stinginess and fate can never be combined in a slave's heart. Great Hassan. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah said, The dust in the cause of Allah and the smoke of hell will never be combined in a slave's heart, in a slave's lungs and stinginess and fate can never be combined in a slave's heart great hassan it was narrated from abu huraira that the prophet said the dust in the cause of allah the mighty and sublime and the smoke of hell will never be combined in the nostrils of a muslim great hassan it was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah said, The dust in the cause of Allah and the smoke of hell will never be combined in the nostrils of a Muslim, and stinginess and fate will never be combined in a Muslim's heart, in a Muslim's in a Muslim man's heart. Great Hassan. It was narrated from Abu al Abu al Allah bin Al Lodge Lodge that he heard Abu Huraira say Allah will never combine the dust in the cause of Allah the mighty and sublime and the smoke of hell in the lungs of a Muslim man and Allah will never combine fate in Allah and stinginess in the heart of a Muslim man great Hassan chapter 9 the reward of the one whose feet become dusty in the cause of Allah. Yasid bin Abi Maryam said, Abaya bin Rafi met me when I was walking to Friday prayers, and he said, Rejoice, for these steps you are taking are in the cause of Allah. I heard Abu Abs say, The Messenger of Allah said, Anyone whose feet become dusty, in the cause of Allah, he will be forbidden to the fire. Great Sahih. Chapter 10. The reward of eyes that stay awake at night in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime. Abu Ali at Tujibi said that he heard Abu Raihana say, I heard the messenger of Allah say, the eye that stays awake in the cause of Allah will be forbidden to the fire. Great Sahih, Great Hassan. <laughs> Chapter 11 The virtue of going out before noon in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime. It was narrated that Sal bin Saad said, The Messenger of Allah said, Going out before noon or afternoon in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime, is better than this world and everything in it. Great Sahih. Chapter 12 The virtue of going out after noon in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime. It was narrated from Abu Abdur Rahman al Hubuli that he heard Abu Ayyub al Ansari say, The Messenger of Allah said, Going out before noon and afternoon in the cause of Allah is better than everything on which the sun rises and sets. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, There are three, all of whom have a promise of help from Allah. The Mujahid, who strives in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime, the man who gets married seeking to keep himself chaste, and the slave who has a contract of manumission and wants to buy his freedom. Great Hassan. Chapter 13 The warriors are the guests of Allah, Most High. Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah said, The guests of Allah, 
the mighty and sublime are free the warrior the pilgrim performing hajj and the pilgrim performing performing umrah great sahih chapter 14 what allah the mighty and sublime guarantees to one who strives in his cause it was narrated from abu huraira that the messenger of allah said Allah the mighty and sublime has guaranteed to the one who strives in his cause only going out for jihad in his cause and believing in his word that he will admit him to paradise or bring him back to his home from which he emerged with whatever he has earned of reward or spoils of war. Great Sahih. Abu Huraira said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, Allah has guaranteed for the one who goes out in the cause of Allah, and nothing makes him do that except faith in me and jihad in my cause, that he will admit him to paradise whether he is killed or he dies, or he will return him to his home from which he departed with whatever he has earned or earned of reward of or spoils of war. Great Hassan Abu Huraira said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say the parable of Mujahid who strives in the cause of Allah, and Allah knows best who strives in the cause of Allah, is that of one who fasts and prays Qiyam continually. Allah has, Allah has promised Mujahid who strives in his cause that he will either cause him to die and admit him to paradise or he will bring him back safely with whatever he had earned of reward or spoils of war. Great Sahih. Chapter 15 The reward of the raiding party that, that fails to achieve its goal. Abdullah bin Amr said, I heard a messenger of Allah say, there is no raiding party that goes out in the cause of Allah and acquires some spoils of war, but they have been given to given two thirds of their reward in this world instead of in the hereafter, and there remains one third in the hereafter, and if they do not acquire any spoils of war, then all of their reward will come in the hereafter. Great Sahih it was narrated from Ibn Umar, from the Prophet, of what he related from his Lord, the Mighty and Sublime, and of my slaves who goes out as a Mujahid striving in the cause of Allah, seeking my pleasure, I guarantee that I will bring him back with whatever he had earned as reward or spoils of war, and if I take his soul, I will forgive him and have mercy on him. Whatever he had earned. Great Sahih. Chapter 16 The Parable of a Mujahid who strives in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, The parable of a Mujahid who strives in the cause of Allah, and Allah knows best who in his cause is that of one who fasts, prays, Qiyam focuses with proper humility, bows and prostrates, great Sahih. <laughs> Chapter 17 What is equal to Jihad in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime? Abu Huraira said, A man came to the Messenger of Allah and said, Tell me of an action that is equal to, to Jihad. He said, I cannot when the Mujahid goes out. Can you enter the Majid? and stand in prayer and never rest, and fast and never break your fast, he said, who can do that? Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abu Dar that he asked the Prophet of Allah which deed was best. He said, believe in Allah and jihad in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime. Great Sahih. <laughs> It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, A man asked the Messenger of Allah, Which deed is best? He said, Faith in Allah. He said, 
Then what? He said, Jihad in the cause of Allah. He said, then what? He said, Hajjun Mabrur 1. 1. Hajj that is accepted or free of sin. Or free of sin. Great Sahih. Chapter 18. The status of a Mujahid who strives in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime. It was narrated from Abu Sayyid al Qudri that the Messenger of Allah said, O oh, oh Abu Sayyid, whoever is content with Allah as Lord, Islam as his religion, and Muhammad as Prophet, then he is guaranteed paradise. Abu Sayyid found this amazing and said, Say it to me again, O oh, Messenger of Allah. So he did that. Then the Messenger of Allah said, and there is something else by means of which a person may be raised 100 degrees in paradise, each of which is like that, which is between the heaven and the earth. He said, What is it, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Jihad in the cause of Allah. Jihad in the cause of Allah. Great Sahih. It was narrated that Abu Ad Dar Darida said, the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever establishes Salah, pays Sakah, and dies not associating anything with Allah, he has a right from Allah, the Mighty and Sublime, that he will forgive him whether he emigrated or died in his birthplace. We said, O Messenger of Allah, shall we not tell the people about it so that they may rejoice. He said, in paradise there are 100 levels, the distance between each two of which is like the distance between the heaven and the earth. Allah has prepared them for the Mujahideen who strive in his cause. Were it not that it would be too difficult for the believers and I cannot find mounts for them, and they do not like to stay behind. If I go out on a campaign, I would not have stayed behind from any expedition. I wish that I could be killed, then be. I wish that I could be killed, then brought back to life, then killed again. Great Hassan. Chapter 19. What reward is there for the one who accepts Islam? emigrates and strives for jihad. It was narrated from Amr bin Malik al-Janbi that he heard Fadallah bin Ubaid say, I heard a messenger of Allah say, I am a Saim, and the same is the guarantor for the one who believes in me and accepts Islam and emigrates a house on the outskirts of paradise, and a house in the middle of paradise, and I am a guarantor for the one who believes in me and accepts Islam and strives in the cause of Allah, a house on the outskirts of paradise, and a house in the middle of paradise, and a house in the highest chambers of paradise. Whoever does that and seeks goodness wherever it is, and avoids evil wherever it is, may die wherever he wants to die. Great Hassan. It was narrated that Sabra bin Abi Faki said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, The Shaitan sits in the paths of the son of Adam. He sits waiting for him in the path to Islam. And he says, Will you accept Islam and leave your religion? and the religion of your forefathers, but he disobeys him and accepts Islam. Then he sits waiting for him on the path to emigration and he says, Will you emigrate and leave behind your land and sky? The one who emigrates is like a horse tethered to a peg, but he disobeys him and emigrates. Then he sits waiting for him on the path to jihad and he says will you fight in the jihad when it will cost you your life and your wealth 
you will fight and be killed and your wife will remarry and your wealth will be divided but he disobeys him and fights in jihad the messenger of allah said whoever does that then he had then he had a right from allah the mighty and sublime that he will admit him to paradise whoever is killed he has a right from allah the mighty and sublime that he will admit him to paradise if he is drowned he has a right from allah that he will admit him to paradise or whomever or whoever is thrown by his mount and his neck is broken he has he had a right from allah that he will admit him to paradise great hassan chapter 20 the virtue of the one who spends on a pair of things in the cause of allah the mighty and sublime Abu Huraira used to narrate that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever spends on a pair of things in the cause of Allah, he will be called in paradise. O slave of Allah, here is prosperity. Whoever is one of those who pray, he will be called from the gate of paradise. Whoever is one of those who participated in jihad, he will be called from the gate of paradise. Whoever is one of those who fast, he will be called from the gate of, of Ar Rayyan. Abu Bakr al Siddiq said, O Messenger of Allah, no distress or need will befall the one who is called from, the, from those gates. Will there be anyone who will be called from all these gates? The Messenger of Allah said, Yes, and I hope that you will be one of them. Great Sahih. Chapter 21 Whoever fights so that the word of Allah will be supreme. Abu Musa al Ashari said, A Bedouin came to the Messenger of Allah and said, A man fights for fame, or he fights for the sports of war, or he fights to show off who is the one who is fighting in the cause of Allah. He said, The one who fights so that the word of Allah will be supreme is the one who is fighting in the cause of Allah, the mighty and supreme, uh, the mighty and sublime. Great Sahih. Chapter 22. The one who fights so that it will be said that so and so was brave. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that one of the people of Ash Sham said to him, O Shaykh, tell me of a hadith that you heard from the Messenger of Allah. He said, Yes, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, The first of people for whom judgment will be passed on the day of resurrection are free. A man who was martyred, he will be brought and Allah will remind him of his blessings. And he will acknowledge them. He will say, What did you do with them? He will say, I fought for your sake until I was martyred. He will say, you are lying. You fought so that it will be said that so and so is brave. And it was said. Then he will order that he be dragged on his face and thrown into the fire. And the second will be, a man who acquired knowledge and taught others and read Quran. He will be brought and Allah will remind him of his blessings and he will acknowledge them. He will say, what did you do with them? He will say, I acquired knowledge and taught others and read the Quran for your sake. He will say, you are lying. You acquired knowledge so that it will be said that you were a scholar and you read the Quran so that it would be said that you were a reciter. And it was said, then he will order then he will order that he be dragged on his face and thrown into the fire. And the third will be a man whom Allah made rich and gave him all kinds of wealth. He will be brought and Allah will remind him of his blessings and he will acknowledge them. He will say, what did you do with them? He will say, I did not leave any way that you like well to be spent. Abu Abdurrahman Rahman An-Nasai said, 
I did not understand what you like as I wanted to. One. But I spent it. He will say, you are lying. You spent it so that it would be said that he was generous and it was said. Then he will order that he be dragged on his face and thrown into the fire. One. That is, he did not hear or understand what came after it as well as he wanted to. But it was similar to what follows regarding the spending. Similar was stated by Shaikh Abdur Rahman al Punjani in his notes on the text. According to al Punjani in his commentary at Taikat as Salafia 251, Great Sahih. <laughs> Chapter 23 The one who fights in the cause of Allah, intending only to get an ikal. 1. 1. Al ikal, the rope by which the camel's foreleg is fettered, as Sindhi. Some of them will say that it is a symbol of wealth in general. It was narrated from Yahya bin Al Walid bin Ubada bin As Samit that his grandfather said. The Messenger of Allah said, Whoever fights in the cause of Allah, intending only to get an ikal, he will have what he intended. Great Hassan. It was narrated from Ubada bin As Samit that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever fights seeking only an ikbal, then he will have what he intended. Great Hassan. Chapter 24 The one who fights seeking reward and fame It was narrated that Abu Umama al-Bahili said A man came to the Prophet and said What do you think of a man who fights seeking reward and fame? What will he have? The Messenger of Allah said He will not have anything He repeated it three times And the Prophet said to him he will not have anything. Then he said, Allah does not accept any deed except that which is purely for him. And seeking his face, Great Hassan. Chapter 25 The reward of the one who fights in the in the cause of Allah for the length of, of the for the length of time between two milkings of a she camel. Mu'ad bin Jabal said that he heard the Prophet say, Whoever fights in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime, for the length of time between two milkings of a she-camel, paradise is guaranteed for him. Whoever asks Allah to be killed in jihad sincerely from his heart, then he dies or is killed, he will have the reward of a martyr. Whoever is wounded or injured in the cause of Allah, it will come on the day of resurrection. Bleeding the most if it ever bled. But its color will be like saffron and its fragrance will be like musk. Whoever is wounded in the cause of Allah, upon him is the seal of the martyrs. Great Sahih. Chapter 26 The reward of the one who shoots an arrow in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime. It was narrated from Shurabil bin As Simt that he said to Ahmed bin Abasa, O Ahmed, tell us a hadith that you heard from the Messenger of Allah. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, Whoever develops one grey hair in the cause of Allah, most high. It will be light for him. On the day of resurrection, whoever shoots an arrow in the cause of Allah Most High, whether, whether it reaches the enemy or not, it will be as if he freed a slave. Whoever frees a believing slave, it will be a ransom for him. From the fire, limb by limb, great Sahih. It was narrated that Abu Naj, Naji As-Sulami said, 
I heard a messenger of Allah say, Whoever shoots an arrow in the cause of Allah and it hits the targets, targets, it will raise him one level in paradise. That day I shot 16 arrows that hit their targets, he said, and I heard the messenger of Allah say, Whoever shoots an arrow in the cause of Allah, it is equal to the reward of freeing a slave, great Sahih. It was narrated that Shurabil bin As Simt said to Kab bin Muda, O Kab, tell us a hadith from the Messenger of Allah and be careful. He said, I heard him say, Whoever develops one grey hair in Islam in the cause of Allah, it will be light for him on the day of resurrection. He said to him, Tell us about the Prophet and be careful. He said, I heard him say, shoot, and whoever hits the enemy with an arrow, Allah will raise him one degree in status thereby. Ibn an Nakan, uh, Ibn an Nahan said, O Messenger of Allah, what is a degree? He said, it is not like, what is a degree? He said, it is not like the doorstep of your mother. One, rather the distance between two degrees is that if a hundred years One, as explained after it, the degree of distance is greater than such a degree in this world. Great Daif <laughs> It was narrated that Shurabil bin As Simt said I said, O Ahmed bin Abasa, tell us a hadith that you heard from the Messenger of Allah without forgetting or omitting anything. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, Whoever shoots an arrow in the cause of Allah and it reaches the enemy, whether it misses or hits, it will be as if he freed slave. Whoever frees a believing slave, that will be a ransom for him, limb by limb, from the fire of hell. Whoever de develops a grey hair in the cause of Allah, it will be light for him on the day of resurrection. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Uqba bin Amir that the Prophet said, Allah the mighty and sublime will admit free people into paradise for one arrow, the one who makes it, intending it to be used for a good cause the one who shoots it, and one who passes it to him. Great Hassan Chapter 27 The one who is wounded in the cause of Allah, the mighty and sublime. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, No one is wounded in the cause of Allah, and Allah knows best who is wounded in his cause, but he will come on the day of resurrection with his wounds bleeding the color of blood but with the fragrance of musk, great Sahih. It was narrated that Abdullah bin Talaba said, The Messenger of Allah said, Wrap them up with their blood, for there is no wound incurred in the cause of Allah. But he will come on the day of resurrection, bleeding with the color of blood, but its fragrance will be that of musk, great Sahih. Chapter 28 What is to be said by the one who is stabbed by the enemy? It was narrated that Jabir bin Abdullah said, On the day of Uhud, the people ran away, and the Messenger of Allah was in one position among twelve men of the Ansar, one of whom was Tala bin Ubaidullah. He said, Who will face the people? Tala said, I will. I will. The Messenger of Allah said, Stay where you are. One of the Ansar said, I will, O Messenger of Allah. He said, You go ahead. So he fought until he was killed. Then he turned and saw the idolaters. He said, Who will face the people? Tala said, I will. The Messenger of Allah said, Stay where you are. One of the Ansar said, I will. 
O Messenger of Allah, he said, you go ahead. So he fought until he was killed. This carried on, and each man of the Ansar went out to face them, and fought like the one before him, and was killed. Until only the Messenger of Allah and Tala bin Ubaidullah were left. The Messenger of Allah said, Who will face the people? Tala said, I will. So Tala fought like the eleven before him until his hand was struck and his fingers were cut off and he exclaimed in pain the messenger of allah said if you had said bismillah in the name of allah the angels would have lifted you up with the people looking on then allah drove back the idolaters great hassan Chapter 29 The one who fights in the cause of Allah and his sword recoils upon him and kills him. Salama bin al Aqwa said, On the day of Kaibar, my brother fought fiercely alongside the Messenger of Allah. Then his sword recoiled upon him and killed him. The companions of the Messenger of Allah, complaining about that, said, A man has died. By his own weapon, Salama said, The Messenger of Allah returned from Kaibar, and, and I said, O Messenger of Allah, do you permit me to recite some lines of Rajah's verse to you? The Messenger of Allah gave him permission, but Umar bin al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Think what you are saying. I said, By Allah, if Allah had not guided us, we would not have been guided. We would not have given in charity nor prayed. The Messenger of Allah said, You have spoken the truth. I continued, Send down tranquility upon us and make us steadfast when we meet the enemy. For the idolaters have transgressed against us. When I completed my Rajas verse, the Messenger of Allah said, Who said that? I said, My brother, the Messenger of Allah said, May Allah have mercy on him. I said, O Messenger of Allah, some people are afraid to offer the funeral prayer for him. And they are saying that he is a man who died by his own weapon. The Messenger of Allah said, He died striving as a mujahid. Ibn Shihab said, Then I asked, a son of Sal Salama bin al -Aqwa, and he narrated a similar report to me from his father except that he said when I said some people are afraid to offer the funeral prayer for him the messenger of Allah said they lied he died striving as a mujahid he died striving as mujahid and he will have a twofold reward and he gestured with two of his fingers Great Sahih Chapter 30 Wishing to be killed in the cause of Allah It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said Were it not that it would be too difficult for my Ummah, I would not have stayed behind from any expedition, but they could not find months, and I could not find any months for them, and it would be too hard for them to stay behind when I went out. And I wish that I could be killed in the cause of Allah, then brought back to life, then killed, then brought back to life then killed three times. Great Sahih. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, I heard a messenger of Allah say, By the one in whose hand is my soul, were it not that some man among the believers would not like to stay behind what I 
would not like to stay behind when I went out to fight, and I could not find any mounts for them. I would not have stayed behind from any campaign that fought in the cause of Allah by the one in whose hand is my soul. I wish that I could be killed in the cause of Allah, then brought back to life, then killed, then be brought back to life, then killed. Great Sahih It was narrated from Ibn Abi Amira that the Messenger of Allah said, There is no Muslim soul among the people that is taken by its Lord and wishes it could come back to you. Even if it had this world and everything in it, except the martyr, Ibn Abi Amira said, The Messenger of Allah said, If I were to be killed in the cause of Allah, that would be dearer to me. That if all the people of the deserts and the cities were to be mine, One, one, meaning if they were all my slaves and I set them free. Great Sahih. <laughs> Chapter 31. The reward of the one who was killed in the cause of Allah. It was narrated that Amr said, I heard Jabir say, a man said on the day of Uhud, If I am killed in the cause of Allah, where do you think I will be? He said, in paradise. He threw down some dates that were in his hand and fought until he was killed. Great Sahih. <laughs> Chapter 32 The one who fights in the cause of Allah but owes a death. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said A man came to the Prophet while he was delivering a kutbah from the minbar and he said If I fight in the cause of Allah with patience and seeking reward facing the enemy and not running away Do you think that Allah will forgive my sins? He said yes Then he fell silent for a while Then he said where is the one who was asking just now? The man said, here I am. He said, what did you say? He said, what did you say? He said, I said, I said, if I fight in the cause of Allah with patience and seeking reward facing the enemy and not running away, do you think that Allah would forgive my sins? He said, yes, except for death. Jibril told me that just now. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Abi Qatada that his father said, A man came to the Messenger of Allah and said, O Messenger of Allah, if I am killed in the cause of Allah with patience and seeking reward, facing the enemy and not running away, do you think that Allah will forgive my sins? The Messenger of Allah said, Yes. When the man turned away, the Messenger of Allah called him back and said, what did you say? He repeated his question and the Messenger of Allah said, Yes, except death. Jibril told me. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Qatada that he heard Abu Qatada narrate from the Messenger of Allah that he stood up among them and said that jihad in the cause of Allah and belief in Allah are the best of deeds. Then a man stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, if I am killed in the cause of Allah, will Allah forgive my sins? The Messenger of Allah said, Yes, if you are killed in the cause of Allah, and you are patient and seek reward, and you are facing the enemy, <coughs> not running away, not running away, except for death, Jibril peace, be, Jibril, peace be upon him, told me that. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Abi Qatada that his father said a man came to the message a man came to the prophet when he was on the minbar and said o messenger of allah do you think that if i wield this sword of mine 
in the cause of Allah. With patience and seeking reward facing the enemy and not running away, will Allah forgive my sins? He said yes when he turned away. He called him back and said, Jibril says, unless you are in depth, great Sahih. Chapter 33, hoping to die in the cause of Allah. It was narrated from Katir bin Mura that the messenger of Allah said, there is no soul on earth that dies and is in a good position before Allah that would like to come back to you. Even if it had all the all this world except the one who is killed in the cause of Allah, he wishes that he could come back and be killed again. Great Hassan, chapter 34. What the people of paradise wish for? It was narrated that Anas said. The messenger of Allah said. A man from among the people of paradise will be brought and Allah the mighty and sublime will say, O son of Adam, how do you find your place in paradise? He will say, O Lord, it is the best place. He will say, ask and wish for whatever you want. He would say, I ask you to send me back to the world so that I may be killed in your cause ten times because of what he sees of the virtue of martyrdom. Great Sahih. Chapter 35 What the martyr feels of pain. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, The martyr does not feel the pain of being killed, except as any one of you feels a pinch. Great Daif. Chapter 36 Asking for martyrdom. Sal bin Abi Umama bin Sal bin Hunayf narrated from his father, from his grandfather, that the messenger of Allah said, whoever asks Allah the mighty and sublime sincerely for martyrdom, Allah will cause him to reach the status of the martyrs, even if of he dies in his bed. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Uqba bin Amir that the messenger of Allah said, there are five things, whoever dies of any of them is a martyr. The one who is killed in the cause of Allah is a martyr. The one who dies of an abdom, 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 abdominal, abdom, abdominal complaint in the cause of Allah is a martyr. The one who dies of the plague in the cause of Allah is a martyr. And the woman who dies in childbirth is the cause of, in the cause of Allah is a martyr. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Al Irbad bin Sariya that the Messenger of Allah said, the martyrs and those who dies in their beds referred a dispute to our Lord concerning those who dies of the plague. The martyrs said. Our brothers were killed as we were killed, and those who dies in their beds said, Our brothers dies on their beds as we die, died. Our Lord said, Look at their wounds. If they look at their wounds, if their wounds, if their wounds are like the wounds of those who were killed, then they are of them and belong with them. And their wounds are, were like their the martyrs' wounds. Great Hassan. Chapter 37. Meeting in paradise of the one who killed and the one who was killed in the cause of Allah. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Allah the mighty and sublime likes it when there are two men, one of whom killed the other, then they both enter paradise. And another time he said, he laughs at two men, at one of whom killed the other, then they both enter paradise. Great Sahih. Chapter 38 Explanation of that 
It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, Allah laughs at two men, one of whom killed the other, but they both entered paradise. The first one fought in the cause of Allah and was killed. Then Allah accepted the repentance of the one who killed him, and he fought and was martyred. Great Sahih. Chapter 39 the virtue of Ar Ribat guarding the frontier. It was narrated from Salman al Qaid that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever guards Ribat, the frontier, for one day and one night will be given a reward like that for fasting and praying Qiyam for a month, and whoever dies at Ribat, guarding the frontier, will be rewarded, and he will be given provision and he will be kept safe from al fatan 1. 1. According to us Sindhi, the preferred pronunciation is al fatan the plural of Fatan, referring to Al-Munkar and An-Nikar and An-Nakir, while al fatan would refer to ash shaitan or the like among the punishment of the grave or the angels of chastisement great sahih it was narrated that salman said i heard a messenger of allah say whoever guards ribat the frontier in the cause of allah for one day and one night he will have a reward like that of fasting and praying qiyam for a month if he dies, he will continue to receive reward for what he did, and he will be kept safe from al Fatan, and he will be given provision. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Surah bin Mabad. Abu Salih, the freed slave of Uthman, said, I heard Uthman bin Affan say, I heard the messenger of Allah say ribat guarding the frontier for one day in the cause of allah is better in rank than a thousand days spent within their residence great sahih it was narrated that abu sali the freed slaves of utman said utman bin afan said i heard a messenger of allah say a day in the cause of allah is better than a thousand days doing anything else. Great Sahih. Chapter 40 The Virtue of Jihad by C. It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, When the Messenger of Allah went to Cuba, he used to come to Umm Haram bint Milhan, and she would feed him. Umm Haram was married to Ubada bint as Samit, the Messenger of Allah entered upon her, and she fed him, and checked his head for lice. The Messenger of Allah fell asleep. Then he woke up smiling. She said, What is making you smile, O Messenger of Allah? She, he said, Some people of my Ummah were shown to me, fighting in the cause of Allah, and riding across the sea like kings on thrones. I said, O Messenger of Allah, pray to Allah to make me one of them. So the Messenger of Allah prayed to Allah to make me one of them. So the Messenger of Allah prayed for her, then he slept again. One of, the, one of narrators, Al Harit, said in his narration, he slept, then he woke up smiling. I said to him, What is making you smile? O Messenger of Allah, he said, Some people of my Ummah were shown to me fighting in the cause of Allah and riding across the sea like kings on thrones as he had said the first time I said O messenger of Allah pray to Allah to make me one of them he said you will be one of the first and she traveled by sea at the time of Muawiyah then she fell from her mount when she came out of the sea and died great Sahih it was narrated from Anas bin Malik that Umm Haram bint Milhan said, The Messenger of Allah came to us and took a nap in our house. Then he woke up smiling. 
I said, O Messenger of Allah, may my father and mother be ransomed for you. What has made you smile? He said, I saw some people of my ummah riding on the sea like kings on thrones. I said, pray to Allah to make, make me one of them. He said, you will be one of them. Then he slept again and woke up smiling. I asked him and he said the same thing. I said, pray to Allah to make me one of them. He said, you will be one of the first. Then Ubada bin Asamit married her and he traveled by sea and she traveled with him. But when she came ashore, a mule was brought to her and she mounted it and it threw her off and broke her neck. Great Sahih. Chapter 41 the battle expedition of India. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah promised us a battle expedition in India. If I live to see that, I will expand myself and my wealth in it. If I am killed, I will be one of the best of the martyrs. And if I come back, I will be Abu Huraira al Muharrad. 1. One Al Muharrad, the one freed, the one freed from the fire. Great Taif. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, "The Messenger of Allah promised that we would invade India. If I live to see that, I will sacrifice myself and my wealth. If I am killed, I will be one of the best of the martyrs. And if I come back, I will be." Abu Huraira al Muharrar, Great Daif. It was narrated that Tavban, the freed slave of the Messenger of Allah, said, The Messenger of Allah said, There are two groups of my Ummah whom Allah will be. <laughs> there are two groups of my Ummah whom Allah will free from the fire the group that invades India and the group that will be with Isa. Bin Maryam, peace be upon him, great Hassan. Chapter 42 Fighting the Turks and the Ethiopians. It was narrated from Abu Sukaina, a man from among the Muharridin. One, that a man among the companions of the Prophet said, when the Prophet commanded them to dig the trench, Al Kandak, there was a rock in their way preventing them from digging. The Messenger of Allah stood, picked up a pickaxe, put his Rida upper garment at the edge of the ditch, and said, And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can change his, his words, and he is the all-hearer, the all-knower. One. One third of the rock broke off while Salman al-Farisi was standing there watching, and there was a flash of light. When the Messenger of Allah struck the rock, then he struck it again and said, And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. Nonce can change his words and, and he is the all-hearer, the all-knower. And another third of the rock broke off. And there was another flash of light which Salman saw. Then he struck the rock a third time and said, And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can change his words, and he is the all-hearer, the all-knower. The last third fell, and the Messenger of Allah came out, picked up his rida, and sat down. Salman said, O Messenger of Allah, each time you struck the rock, there was a flash of light. The Messenger of Allah said to him, O Salman, did you see that? He said, Yes by the one who sent you with the truth. O Messenger of Allah, he said, when I struck the first blow, the cities of Kisra and their 
and their environs were shown to me and many other cities and I saw them with my own eyes those of his those of his companions who were present said O messenger of Allah pray to Allah to grant us victory and to give us their land as spoils of war and to destroy their lands at our hands so the messenger of Allah prayed for that then he said then I struck the second blow and the cities of Caesar and their environs were shown to me and I saw them with my own eyes they said O messenger of Allah pray to Allah to grant us victory and to give us their lands as spoils of war and to destroy their lands at our hands so the messenger of Allah prayed for that then he said then I struck the third blow and the cities of Ethiopia were shown to me and the villages around them and I saw them with my own eyes but the messenger of Allah said at that point leave the Ethiopians alone so long as they leave you alone and leave the Turks alone so long as they leave you alone 1 An Anam 615 Great Hassan It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, The hour will not begin until the Muslims fight the Turks, a people with faces like hammered shields, who wear clothes made of hair and shoes made of hair. Great Sahih Chapter 43 Seeking the support of Allah by the supplications of the weak. It was narrated from Musab bin Saad from his father that he thought he was better than other companions of the Prophet. The Prophet of Allah said, Rather Allah support this Ummah because of their supplication, their Salah and their sincerity. <laughs> Great Sahih Ch It was narrated from Jubair bin Nufayr al-Hadrami that he heard Abu ad-Darda say, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, Bring me the weak, for you only receive provision and divine support by virtue of your weak ones. Great Sahih. Chapter 44 The Virtue of the One Who, equi who Equips a Warrior. It was narrated from Sayyid bin Khalid that the Messenger of Allah said, Whoever equips a warrior in the cause of Allah has fought. And whoever looks after his family in his absence has fought. Great Sahih. It was narrated that Sayyid bin Khalid al Juhani said, The Messenger of Allah said, Whoever equips a warrior has fought, and whoever looks after his family in his absence, absence has fought. Great Sahih. It was narrated that al Anaf bin Qais said, we set out as pilgrims and came to al Madinah, intending to perform a Hajj. While we were in our camping place unloading our mounts, someone came to us and said, The people have gathered in the Majid and there is Panis. So we set out and found the people gathered around a group in the middle of the Majid among whom were Ali, Subair, Tala and Saad bin Abi Waqqas. While we were like that, Uthman, may Allah be pleased with him, came wearing a yellow cloak, with which he had covered his head. He said, Is Tala here? Is as Subair here? Is Saad here? They said, Yes. He said, I adjure you, be the one beside whom there is none worthy of worship, didn't the Messenger of Allah say, Whoever buys the Midbad one of Banu so and so, Allah will forgive him, and I bought it for twenty or twenty five thousand. Then I came to the Messenger of Allah and told him, and he said, Add it to our Majid, and the reward for it will be yours. They said, By Allah, yes. He said, I adjure you by the one beside whom there is none worthy of worship. Did the Messenger of Allah say, Whoever buys the well of Ruma, Allah will forgive him. So I bought it for such and such an amount. And amount. 
Then I came to the Messenger of Allah and told him and he said give it to provide water for the Muslims and the reward for it will be yours. They said by Allah yes. He said I adjure you by the one beside whom there is no worthy of worship. Then the Messenger of Allah say whoever equips these men meaning the army of Al Usra Tabuk Allah will forgive him. So I equipped them until they were not lacking, even a rope or a bridle. They said, By Allah, yes. He said, O Allah, bear witness. O Allah, bear witness. O Allah, bear witness. 1. Midbad, a place for drying dates. Great Hassan. Chapter 45 The virtue of spending in the cause of Allah. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Whoever spends on a pair of things in the cause of Allah will be called in paradise. O slave of Allah, here is prosperity. Whoever is one of the people of Salah, he will be called from the gate of paradise. Whoever is one of the people of Jihad, he will be called from the gate of paradise. Whoever is one of the people of charity, he will be called from the gate of paradise. Whoever is one of the people who fast, he will be called from the gate of Ar Rayyan. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, said, O Messenger of Allah, no distress or need will befall the one who is called from those gates. Will there be anyone who will be called from all these gates? The Messenger of Allah said, Yes, and I hope that you will be one of them. Great Sahih. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah said, Whoever spends on a pair of things in the cause of Allah, the gatekeepers of paradise will call him from the gates of paradise, saying, O oh, so and so, come and enter. Abu Bakr said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, such a person will never perish or be miserable. The Messenger of Allah said, I hope that you will be one of them. Great Sahih. It was narrated that Sasa ah, bin Muawiyah said, I met Abu Dar and said, Tell me a hadith. He said, Yes. The Messenger of Allah said, There is no there is no Muslim worshipper who spends from each type of his wealth on a pair of things in the cause of Allah, but the keepers of paradise will welcome him, all of them calling him to what they have of reward. I said, How is that? He said, If it is camels, he gives two, and if it is cows, he gives two. Great Sahih. It was narrated that Kureim bin Fatik said, The Messenger of Allah said, Whoever spends in the cause of Allah, it will be recorded for him 700 fold. Great Sahih. Chapter 46 The Virtue of Charity in the Cause of Allah. It was narrated from Abu Masud that a man gave a bridle camel in charity in the cause of Allah the messenger of Allah said on the day of resurrection 700 brid bridled camels will come to you great sahih it was narrated from Muad bin Jabal that the messenger of Allah said campaigns are of two types as for the one who seeks as for the one who seek the face of Allah obeys the Imam, spends what is precious to him, is easy going with his companion, and avoids mischief when he is asleep and when he is awake. It will all bring reward, but as for the one who fights to show off and he disobeys the Imam and does mischief in the land, he will not come back. The same as when he left. One. 
one it was not simply be the case that he comes back with no good deeds to his credit rather he will he will have a number of evil deeds on his record great sahih chapter 40, 47 the sanctity of the wives of the mujahideen it was narrated from Sulaiman bin Bureyda that his father said The Messenger of Allah said the sanctity of the wives of the Mujahideen to those who stay behind is like the sanctity of their mothers. There is no man who takes on the responsibility of looking after the wife of one of the Mujahideen and betrays him with her, but he the, but he, the betrayer will be made to stand before him on the day of resurrection and he will take whatever he wants of his good deeds. So what do you think? Great Sahih. Chapter 48 The one who betrays a warrior with his wife. It was narrated from Sulaiman bin Bureyda from his father that the messenger of Allah said the sanctity of the wife of the messenger of the Mujahideen to those who stay behind is like the sanctity of their mothers. If he takes on the responsibility of looking after his wife, then betrays him, it will be said to him on the day of resurrection. This one betrayed you with your wife, so take whatever you want of his good deeds. So what do you think? Great Sahih. It was narrated from Ibn Bureyda from his father that the, that the Messenger of Allah said, The sanctity of the wives of the Mujahideen to those who stay behind is like the sanctity of their mothers. There is no man among those who stay behind who takes on the responsibility of looking after the wife of one of the Mujahideen and betrays him but he, the betrayer, will be made to stand before him on the day of resurrection. And it will be said, O oh, so and so, this is so and so, take whatever you want from his good deeds. Then the prophet turned to his companions and said, What do you think? Will he leave him any of his good deeds? Great Sahih. It was narrated that Anas said, the Messenger of Allah said, Strive in jihad with your hands, your tongues and your wealth. 1. 1. C. 3098. Great Daif. It was narrated from Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger of Allah commanded that snakes be killed and he said, Whoever fears their vengeance is not one of us. Great Daif. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Abdullah bin Jabir from his father that the Messenger of Allah visited Jabir, visited Jabir when he was sick. When he entered, he heard a woman crying and saying, We thought that your death would come when fighting in the cause of Allah. He said, you think that martyrdom only comes when one is killed in the cause of Allah? In that case, your martyrs would be few. Being killed in the cause of Allah is martyrdom. Dying of abdominal, abdominal complaint is martyrdom. Being burnt to death is martyrdom. Drowning is martyrdom. Being crushed beneath a falling wall is martyrdom. Dying of pleurisy is martyrdom, and a woman who dies along with her fetus is a martyr. A man said, Are you weeping when the Messenger of Allah is sitting here? He said, Let them be. But if he dies, on one should weep for him. Great Sahih. It was narrated from Jabir that he entered with the messenger of Allah upon someone who was dying and the women were weeping Jabir said 
Are you weeping when the Messenger of Allah is sitting here? He said, Let them weep so long as he is among them. But if he dies, no one should weep for him. Great Sahih.